God has brought us from dang, he's kept us from dang to sin and other things. When I say that there are things that we probably should have been caught up in that we didn't get caught up in. Yeah. We walked by somebody who was in faith and God kept us. Yes, you know, you, you may have said met someone who had it going had the virus and God kept us from that. And that's a blessing for that. Yeah. It's really a blessing. It's really a blessing. But we're gonna move forward. I just want to tell God, thank you for another day. Amen. How many of y'all are just grateful for another day's journey? And I was really glad about this. God has really kept us. But um, we're going to move forward. I got a word that I want to share with you guys today that I think that God has really just dropped in my spirit for this moment. We're going to pray, God, we thank you. We give you glory. We magnify your name. We worship you. There's none like you in the earth. We search high and low and can't find nobody like you, God. God, we give you your, we thank you for your divine presence, God. We thank you for all the things you've done for us, Lord God. You keep us when we can't keep ourselves, Lord God. God, protect us and keep us safe, Lord God. As we travel up and down the highways, as we go up and down the road to work, Lord God. God, let us be a vessel for you and you alone, Lord God. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. I was trying to figure out God never really gave me a title for this. I tried to put one together for it. But I just want to talk. Today, I just want to talk to you. If you can hear me, can everybody hear me pretty good? Yeah. So today, I want to talk to you about one of your most powerful weapons. Hmm. What do you think your most powerful weapon is? Tongue. Your tongue. That's correct, Sister Jane, your tongue. I want to ask you a question this morning. And I got a lot of scripture, so I don't have one key scripture for you. How are you using your, your weapon? How are you using your tongue? <coughs> your words can destroy or create. Yes. As a child of God, our tongue has a lot of power. Proverbs confirm this. Proverbs 18 and 21 confirms that it says this. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it shall eat its fruit. We can also see in Matthew 18 and 18, I'm going to teach this this morning. He says, verily I say unto you, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, yeah. and whatsoever you loose in earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yeah, yeah. These verses both prove how good and how bad our words can be. All right. Your words can frame your world, and your words can tear your world down. The words that you said can speak life over yourself, yes, sir. or the words you said can tear yourself down. Right. Not nobody else. I'm talking about yourself first. Right. This, there is power and responsibility that is discussed several times in the Bible. I want you to listen to this. Everybody listen to this. In our homes, where parents, aunties, uncles, and uncles, and grandparents, and older siblings are quick to say hurtful and unkind things. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever been at home and you as a parent said some unkind things to your children? Right. Or your spouse said some unkind things to you? Or better yet, your children said some unkind things to their parents? Yes, sir. Or their, or their siblings said unkind things to their siblings? Have you ever seen that? These words are not just thrown out with little or no gratitude for the impact they have on the receiver. Every word that you put out have an impact on the receiver. Yeah. What you mean, Dean? Parents, how can you call your children lazy, silly, crazy, or stupid and expect anything different? Spouses, how can you say to your husband or your wife, you are annoying or irritating and expect him to become your dream partner? Again, I said your words can build you up. Again, I said your words can tear somebody down. Yeah. Our words have so much power. Our words frame our world. I got a question for you. Ephesians 4 and 29 says, Let no corruption come out of your mouth. Only such is good for building up. Yeah. As fit for this occasion that you may give grace to those that hear. This scripture tells us today, we're reminded the power of tongue can carry the power we carry in our tongue. How many times do you build up a person? 
or you tell them down? How many times do you believe us via Facebook or sitting in the parking lot have used your words to tear somebody down? Yeah. I know I have. You might not be honest and mean with your own self, but you have too. Right. You said hurtful words to someone and you're torn their life down. If we acknowledge the fact that we were all created in God's image, he who created the world by speaking into the existence. Yeah. Watch this. Psalms 33 and 6 says, By the word of the Lord, heavens were made, and they and by his breath of his mouth, all, all of his hosts. We need to accept the responsibility of what comes out of our out of our mouth. That's a huge gift that's in our mouth. Yeah. God gave us all something powerful when he gave us a tongue. Right. God gave us all something powerful when he gave us a mouth. How do you use your words? And I'm tired of folks saying, that's just who I am. That's how I talk. You got to grow past it. You got to mature that and be what God called you to be. Work on your mouth. Work on your language. Work on how you communicate. Matthew 12 and 36 says, I'll tell you one day of the judgment, people will give account for every." Countless words they said. Write that one down. So man, the post that would have given Matthew 12 and 36. He says, I tell you on the day of judgment, people would give account for every careless word they spoke. Yeah. So every word that you spoke that's careless, you got to give account on the day of judgment. Yeah. Again, I ask you, how are you using your tongue? Are you using your tongue to build up people? Or are you using your tongue to tear down people? But the question again, I ask you, how are you using it? Let me tell you something. Use your words and be careful with the things that you say. Yeah. You got to be careful how you use your words. Right. You got to be extra careful how you say a thing. You got to be careful on what you do because God wants you to use your word with respect. Yeah. Watch this. Proverbs 13 and 3 says, he says, guard, whosoever guard his mouth preserves his life. But who who open his mouth, who open his lips run open his lips come to run. In other words, when you just talk and talk and talk, you ruin your life. But those who guard their life, their mouth preserves their life. We gotta realize, Saint, that we gotta understand how we're gonna use our mouth. Yeah. How are you gonna use your mouth? Watch this, Ephesians 4 and 29, it says, Let no corrupt talking come out of your mouth, but only such as good for building up. In other words, we can't just use um, all kind of language. Let me show you another good one. Y'all might want to write this one down too. Proverbs 18 and 19. A brother who has been insulted is hard to win back than a wall, a wall city. And arguments separate people like bears of a gate. When you insult a man or a woman, it's hard to win their friendship back. I didn't say it. That's what Proverbs said. Spouses, think about how many times you insult, insult your spouse. It's hard to win that back. It says arguments separate people like a bear or like a bear gate of a flower. Arguments cause barriers that you can't go back in on time. It, Proverbs 10 and 20 says, the words of a good person are like pure silver. But an evil person thoughts are worth this very little. Watch this. Proverbs 26 and 20. All I got a scripture for you today. Because God's been dealing with me about what, how are you using your mouth? We got to check the way we're talking. Yeah. We got to check our communication. A lot of us, mouth, our mouth are foul and we say we love God. A lot of us don't even want to build our fellow man up. Parents, we try to build our children up. Spouses, you got to build each other up. And hurtful things don't build up people. Watch this. First Peter 3 and 9 says, Don't repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessings because, because of this you are, you are called to be an inheritance that you, that you, you may inherit a blessing. 
We got to understand how to talk. Kind words, what the Bible says, are like honey, sweet to the soul, healthy for the body. I need you to understand this. I need you to understand that, the, that God wants us to understand. He wants you to know how to communicate. I, want, I like this particular scripture. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I want to start back in the book of James. James chapter 3. It says, we put bits into the, the mouth of a horse to make them obey us. We can turn the whole animal. You can, you can take ships as an example. All that they are so large and they are driven by the wind, they are steered by a very small rudder where the powder wants it to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider a great fire, a forest is on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil coming apart the men of body parts. It corrupts the whole body and set the course on one's life on fire, and it sets itself on fire by hell. And then go on down to verse 9, it says, But with the tongue we praise our Lord, and with it we curse human beings. Hmm. We have been made in God's likeness, but out of the mouth come praises and curses. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both salt can both fresh water and salt flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olive, or can a grape bear figs? Neither can a spring, can salt spring from fresh water. In other words, are you using your tongue to upbuild your people or tear it down? I know I ain't gonna get a lot of likes. I know I ain't gonna get a lot of homes, and that, but I'm gonna teach you this is what God gave me. Our tongues is important. How you say a thing is important. Are you always criticizing the people? Are you always talking down to people? Or one day you're giving God the praise and the next day you're tearing somebody down with your mouth? The Bible said, I just said, that's in James 3, go back and read it. He says, the fresh water and salt water don't come out the same spring. Nor does praise and, and curses. The day, how do you use your most powerful weapon? Are you, are you just using it this? on Sundays or on Wednesday or whenever you're around the right people, you're giving God praises? And around another set of people, you're tearing them down? Are you loving somebody today and then tomorrow when you get around a, a different set of people, you're talking about them? Spouses, are you loving your spouse one moment and around somebody else, you're talking about them? Parents, are you loving your kids one day and around somebody else, you tear them down? Church members, how do you how do you portray your own, your own the kingdom of God? If they're going to follow you, and to somebody you're giving God the praise, and to somebody else you tell, you're not tell, you, you're not being a, a good kingdom building out your mouth. I, I, I want to tell you this, because I've been praying about this, and I, I remember I was this morning, I was up, and I was typing this. It's in Luke 45, 6 and 45. And it's the, it's the last part of that scripture. It says, for out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. And this is what I want to tell you. When you're not building somebody up, you tear them down. And how does this tie into that scripture, Pastor? This is how I tie in. Let me tell you how I tie in. Sometimes when we open our mouth, most times, our mouth and heart is tied together. That's what the Bible just said. So what, what your mouth says is what's really in your heart. You can praise God in front of everybody else. But when your mouth open up, that's what's in your heart. I didn't make that up. When your mouth open up, that's what's in your heart. So I'm going to ask you a question today. What's in your heart? What's in your heart? Are you, are you, are you the one that's going to build the kingdom up? Or are you going to tear it down? 
And let me tell you something. God watches our responses. He watches how we respond back to people. He watches how we ignore people. He watches how we avoid people, but we love God. He watches how we don't want to deal with people. But we love God. Let me tell you something. Your tongue is your most powerful weapon. So the question is for you this morning is, how are you using your weapon? This week, you know, I, I, I've come to realize some folks have pleasure in telling folks off. Some folks find pleasure in just being nasty. They know I don't play. You ever hear him say that? They know I don't play. But they love God. They love God. So I'm going to ask you the question. What's, how, how are you using your... This is one of the most powerful... I need to walk around now and I ain't got my hair set on. This is one of your most powerful weapons ever. And yeah. he did bring it, but I just didn't put it on. This is one of your most powerful weapons. Is your tongue. How are you going to use your tongue? Are you going to use your tongue to give God praises? Are you going to use your tongue to tear down people? Are you going to use your tongue to build up folks? Are you going to use your tongue to talk evil against your against people? Parents and spouses, uncles and aunties, grandparents. How do you talk to your children? How do you talk to one another? What I realized, and I said it last Sunday, there is something important about communication. Right. If you ever, if you want to see any relationship fall, right. it's going to be through communication. I don't know what it is, but the devil does not want in your marriage. He don't want you to talk. In the church, he don't want you to talk. On your job, he don't want you to talk. With your children, he don't want you to talk. And by not talking, relationships fall down. By not talking, things are not going to be worked out. How many times have you just tried to sweep some, something under the rug and next year it builds to be something bigger? You got to communicate. We got to know how to be effective in our communication. We got to know how to do the things that God wants us to do. Yeah. We got we to work on that, y'all. I'm telling you, God gave us something powerful. We gave us a, a tongue communication. God wants us to praise him, but you think God wants you to praise him? And then tell your brother and sister down. A man that we don't know, that we can't see. And we can't even love the folks that sit next to us. But you say you love God. You say you, say you got God in your life. You said that God is the best thing that ever happened to you. But you can't even love your husband. You can't even love your wife. You can't even love your church members. You can't even love your children right. Children can't even love their parents right. Seems like communication is becoming a battle now. Is it just me? The devil don't want you to communicate. He wants your marriage to fall down. He wants your family to fall down. All because you won't talk. My question to you is, how are you going to use your tongue? Oh, I like it. It's quiet and it's good. So I'm not, I love it. I want you to be thinking, how are you going to use your tongue? Right. Tongue for gossip. Do you use your tongue for backbiting? Do you use your tongue to tear, to tear up? To tear? Yeah. But you know what? I find out we're selected who we want to encourage. We encourage somebody over here to tear the next person down. Right. If you can't say nothing good, just don't say nothing. When was the last time you shared a good word with somebody? You know what? I just heard the Lord. Sometimes that good word started in your own house. Your tongue is so valuable that God created for you to encourage and praise him. He gave us a mouth and the ability to talk, to give him glory, and to reverence his name, and to build up our fellow man, to give out instructions that we use for the exact opposite. We tell everything about what we tell everything about what God is doing in our lives. 
We tell everything about what God, you know, anything that's good with God, but anything bad. Ain't it funny how it spreads, it spreads like wildfire? Right. I need you to hear me this morning. How are you using your tongue? How are you using your mouthpiece this morning? Are we carrying the gospel one day? And that's all of us because we're all gospel carriers. And tearing down somebody the next day. How's your interaction with can your, can your Can your friends and your family members say you really respond like Jesus? You, 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 you talk about him, how good he is, but do you respond like him? This has been on my heart all week, y'all. All week, since the beginning of the week, since last Sunday. And he's been telling me, your tongue is valuable. Your tongue is valuable. It's how you use it. Your tongue is, can be, it can be, it can bring lies to somebody or it can kill them. So this morning, I'm going to ask you again. I'm going to challenge you this week. What are you doing with your, with your tongue? We, we know we know what the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God, but we got to we got to control our mouth first. Amen. Because you know you can go in, you can go in, you, you you can talk too much. All right. Our our tongue should bring life. Our words should be smooth and like sail. That's, that's, that's the word I have for you today. This is what, this is it. This is our, this is our, if you're on Facebook, just post in that comment section. How am I using my most valuable weapon? I want, that, that's a personal question. How am I using my, my most valuable weapon? That's on you. That's that's not on that's not on me. That's not on the elder. That's not on the deacon. That's not on on the elders of the church. The mothers of the church. It's how are you using your most valuable weapon? Yeah. Are you slick by the mouth? Do you cut them down even though they believe that they walk away from you? Again. We got to work on that, y'all. We got to work on that. We got to work on that this morning. We got to work on that. That's just been heavy on my heart, working on our mouth. Mine ain't in the best shape. I'm guilty. That's probably why he gave me the word. So I don't know what you think it's about you because he probably gave it to me or because my mouth is slick. But I'm working on that. So this is what God is wanting. He is, he is wanting us to say, how do I communicate better? Let me ask you a question. After you hear this word today, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to really try it? Because let me tell you something I do understand. You, when your mouth is slack and you said something, when the person walk off, you know you said something slick. The Holy Spirit should convict you in your heart. You should fix those things. Now that's how you do me. I don't know how you do y'all. We gotta work on that. We gotta start. We gotta start building that up. How do we get it together? What does God want from me? I gotta be. I gotta do what God wants me. I gotta speak the way God wants me to speak. And for some of us, that's gonna hurt us because we lived our lives. Because we listen, listen. Thank you, God. We lived our lives because we hurt, and we and we we hurt. And the worst that you can do is that another hurt person get together. A hurt person can't encourage nobody. They gotta. They all wounds gotta be healed. You can't live your whole life thinking everybody's against you. You can't live your whole life thinking everybody don't like you. And if, and if everybody's against you and everybody don't like you, what are you doing? There's got to be something wrong with you. It's time for self-evaluation.
Thank you, God, for that breeze. It felt real good. But God is wanting us to evaluate ourselves and apply this word. Not just today. Go back tomorrow and we listen to him. He told me, he said, teach the word to the people. People, they got to hear the word because there is something that caring that God wants us to hear about the way we communicate. I think that we all can work on that. I think that we all can work on that. I think that we all can make an effort to do something better. Instead, instead of putting fire on the, on the, on the, instead of putting gas in the fire, try putting water on it with your word. The Bible says a soft-spoken word turn away wrath. Gentle words. Word. Because I know, I know you can be hurt. Back. But that's, is that always the right thing to do? I'm preaching to my own self, y'all. I'm preaching right. to myself. If I had me a horn in front of me, I would hunk it just then. Yeah. Well, I like the look because I know. I'm preaching to my own self. Sometimes you want to get, you want to get back in, but that's not. You want to be like Jesus. We want to be like Jesus. Yeah. We can't be like Jesus. And our tongues and our mouth ain't right. Yes, sir. God will cry, is requiring more from us, y'all. These are moments now to grow us up. I don't care what nobody. We all are work in progress. We're all a work in progress. Yes. So, for listening, working this word, if you're not saved, this is your what I want you to understand is that God can change your mouth. That's what the old folk was saying. Y'all remember y'all grandma and mama said, I didn't talk the way I used to. What they was really saying is God can God clean my mouth up. And I don't say that same conversation no more. That's what it was really, that's what the old folk was really trying to tell us. So this is it. You're not saying this is your moment. If you're watching it on Facebook, you need salvation, just type in salvation. If you need prayer, one of the intercessors will pick you up, just type in, I need prayer, in the comment line, and we'll reach out to you. But God has graced us for this moment and for this season. This is a, this is a take home moment. Work on ourselves. Work on, work, work on your. Go back home and polish up your most valuable tool, your tongue. Yeah. Polish it up. Get it ready. Because you got to know you got to know when you leave here, you can hit the road up there. Somebody might call you and challenge, your, and challenge the way you're going to respond back to them. Tomorrow at work, somebody might just challenge you. Your family member might just challenge you. You just left church, you talking like that? Because they're going to say it. So how do you respond? Again, we thank you for showing, for uh, for coming in this morning. If you're on Facebook and you want to sew in, our cash app tag is my STBC. Again, that's my STBC. Check the comment state line. You can sew in to St. Paul. That's our St. Paul location. And for our Montgomery location is my LHL. And we'll um you can you can sew into the ministry. Again, we thank you for tuning in today. We thank y'all for coming out. We're going to say, we're going to pray, and we're going to get ready to go home. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. We thank you for just your grace and your mercy, Lord God. We thank you for the word, Lord God. I pray that the word is challenged every spirit that's watching to do better in our communication, to do better in our response, Lord God. Their husband and wife can talk better. Their mamas and daughters and fathers and sons can talk better. Their brothers and sisters can talk better. Their grandparents can talk better. Uncles and aunties, co-workers, just our everyday neighbors, whoever they may be, that we can communicate them with the way you have us communicate. Lord God, those, those customers that we interact with every day, Lord God, let us be the light for them. Yes. We don't need them to be the light for us. Let us be the light for them. Yes. 
that our actions line up to your action, Lord God. And Lord God, we just give you, we love on you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, y'all have a good day.